मैं तो दिल्ली दिल्ली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, COVID-19 patient charged. Kawakawa and Donu ban may be suspended. And health officials warned against leaking information. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The 54-year-old man of Sosor Lambasa, alleged to have breached quarantine restrictions, has been released on a thousand-dollar bail. Mohammed Sahid appeared in a special sitting at the Lambasa Magistrates Court this morning, charged with one count of neglect to comply with directions of a medical officer, contrary to Section 70C of the Public Health Act. It is alleged that between 24th and 30th March, Sahid was found in Lambasa town and neglected to comply with the directions to remain in self-quarantine for 14 days at his home in Soa Soa. Magistrate Senilemba Levavi granted bail of $1,000 with two sureties and has ordered Sahid to comply with all his bail conditions. He must adhere to the 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, report to the Lombasa police station fortnightly on a Saturday, surrender travel documents and not interfere with witnesses. Since Sahid has been medically cleared of COVID-19, he is allowed movement but not out of the country. The case has been adjourned to June 22nd for mention. A submission has been made to Cabinet to suspend the seasonal ban of Kawakawa and Donu for this year. Minister for Fisheries Semi Koroi Lavisau says there are threats to food security due to COVID-19 and the ban must be carefully weighed. Apanisa Wangarandovu reports a decision has to be made before Monday when the ban is set to kick in. An urgent cabinet paper is being drafted this weekend proposing that the ban of Kawakawa and Donu be deferred. We are discussing... Uh the ban and the effects that will have on the population of Fiji during these difficult times. So uh, I am in the process of submitting uh, submission to cabinet for reconsideration on the ban, but that uh, hopefully is uh, to be submitted this weekend. All ministries are helping cope with COVID-19 in whatever way possible, and Korila Misao says allowing the sale and consumption of Kawakawa and Donu will ensure food security. Uh, this has been mainly because uh, there has been a lot of discussions on the effect of COVID-19 and the impact on the, our rural local communities and the income generations that they are getting and also on the basis of food security. The minister is hoping a decision is made soon so that those affected can be informed. I'm hoping that it will be finalized before the first which uh, the ban should come into place uh, so that we can have uh, the proper regulatory framework to formalize that, uh, that discussion. We come from Telewe, those some will verify because our office is this one, Samman Kord and Kawakawa. The ban is good, but the thing is it's too long. If they can just uh, ban the thing for two months, just for August and September, it will be good. Okay. I'm really hoping that the band will be suspended. Times are hard and these fish are our source of livelihood. The band, if suspended, will not mean that fishermen can catch as many as they want. The ministry will create a proper framework to ensure the two species are not exploited. Apinisa Wangaradobu, FBC News. The Minister for Health has made it clear that any official who leaks confidential information has no place in the service. The personal details of two COVID-19 patients were leaked last month, and Dr. Wanganambete says this was a cowardly act. The case is being investigated by the Criminal Investigation Department. He says patients' names, age and addresses must always be confidential, and any breaches will not be condoned. I'm certainly a bit. It is some, if it is somebody within the Ministry of Health, we can't help them. We can't help them because they leaked uh, specific information of uh, patients. You know, it's a cowardly act, uh, but whoever did, whether it's from within the ministry or outside of the ministry. As businesses continue to feel the pinch of COVID-19, smaller operators are having to dig deep to stay afloat. One small business operator has decided to collaborate on creative, unique products with other SMEs in the hopes of sharing the burden and managing to thrive in light of the pandemic. Lena Reese has more. 
Small businesses have their own concerns and fears during this pandemic, but Zubair Fiji is using its survival story to lift spirits and motivate other creative entrepreneurs. Uh, remaining positive um, in the face of what is a difficult situation um, and creating something beautiful. Um, because psychologically people respond well to, to beautiful things. Um, it's a well-proven fact. So we've basically just, we've, we've really focused on that, you know, honing in our skill, making sure that our product is more beautiful than before, and making sure that the space that we operate out of is more beautiful than before. The fashion boutique was born out of collaboration, and this is a driving force in Fazali's decision to work with other SMEs to keep earning an income and providing employment. We realized that it had a ripple effect to inspire the collaboration with Kavar Wood Art to create um, cheese boards for us, um, coasters, and then it even further uh, inspired the next collaboration with Alice Hill from Hot Class to uh, create tumblers and jars that are inspired by our latest Vatu print. And then we continue on to look at other collaborations. The COVID-19 lockdown has given these local and young entrepreneurs a time to revamp their boutique in collaboration with other artists in the hopes of creating a rippling effect for support in and around creative local SMEs. Lena Reese, FBC News. The COVID-19 pandemic has not spared anyone, as people living with disabilities are also losing their jobs. The United Blind Persons of Fiji and the National Disability Awards Committee has identified about 150 families in dire need of assistance. Faria Begum with this report. The disadvantaged are some of the worst affected by calamities such as COVID-19, and NGOs are ensuring they are not left behind. I know it's not easy during this time, uh... But then again, uh, Digicel and a few other companies that have uh, joined us in terms of supporting our members, not only in the Central Division, but uh, we are now supporting our members in the Western Division. And uh, in the near future, we will be going out to the Maritime and also to the Northern side as well. Prasad says proper procedures have been followed to identify families who are in need. The members that are in need are either some of them are unemployed or some of them are staying with the family that are facing unemployment. Pandemic. One of the donor companies, Digital Fiji, believes now is the time to help fellow Fijians as the entire nation struggles to make ends meet. The people of this country, uh, we need to look at uh, smaller initiatives where it matters most. You know, this, that's, that's, what, that's the motto or that's the drive that we have internally at the moment where we're, looking, we're not looking for the big bang um, CSR activity that you know, will get us in the media and get us out there. Uh, in the big space, but we're looking at the smaller uh, avenues where the, the effort and the uh, help that we are providing will make the most impact. Families are provided essential food items, sanitary products and other donations. Fadia Begum, FBC News. Up ahead, drug raids continue. A new method of drying kava. Radio Fiji One, Nandomo Iviti. Eliminating illegal drugs from our society remains a priority for the Fiji Police Force. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio says the prevalence of illicit drugs has seen the force conducting successful raids in the past few months. Kritika Kumar reports. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio says they are moving into the drug producing areas of Vanualevu. Kandavu was uh, thought to be the, the main uh, supplier of, uh, of green drugs or marijuana, but uh, it's all over now. We're moving into areas of Tailevu where we made, uh, we were doing op operations uh, recently. Uh, we are moving into the, the areas of Vanuelevu where we've noticed uh, certain um, signatures of the way they do things. The police commissioner says illicit drugs cannot be eradicated. However, they are managing to control them. He adds some social issues are being faced by the officers in light of COVID-19. And that's what we are, we, we are working hard on because at the end of the day it can affect the criminal landscape and other issues that come with it, which will fall on the responsibility of police 
to deal with it. The police commissioner says all these issues have been highlighted through information that has been collected by the force. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. A new invention could present a turning point in how kava farmers and dealers treat their produce during the drying process. This new invention not only saves time but is easy to use, environmentally friendly and drastically improves the quality of kava. Eleanor Terangai View has more. Built entirely using imported materials, this solar UV dryer has the capacity to dry one ton of kava in a day. This two ultra this polycarbonate sheets. They have a system inside, they don't break it up. They increase the UV ray, trap the heat, and put it into this closed air type chamber, put it the special stones, Kadiapa stones, which are there. They hold on to the heat. Developed by the Fiji Organic Research Center for Excellence or FORCE in Savu Savu, the solar UV dryer is the first of its kind built solely for cover drying but can also be used for drying other agricultural products. Most of the villagers do not have sufficient power so they can use the existing um, dryers that we've launched. We've, there is no electricity required and they um, are able to dry uh, very fast kava, copra or anything else, agricultural uh, product or farm produce at the lowest possible time. Lal's Kava Limited, which operates out of Nangere in Savu Savu, exports kava to New Zealand and Australia and also supplies kava to major dealers in Vitilevu. After seven years of using the traditional sun drying method, they have switched to using this unit. First, it's uh, environmentally safe and friendly. It uh, saves a lot of um, time and effort and it's not weather prone. Like we don't have to rely on the weather for all the drying processes of all the kava. Uh, very convenient, like we did not have to rely on a lot of laborers. Already five cover farmers and dealers in Vanolevu are using this unit with more expressing interest. Eleanor Turangai will FBC News. The Rotary Club of Suva Peninsula Sunset carried out a food hamper relief drive in April in the wake of tropical cyclone Harold. Club President Prashant Anurag says that they discovered a need to help families with newborn babies and toddlers. So they started a baby essentials drive to assist where they can. Maggie Boyle tells us more. Helping mothers in need, the Rotary Club responding to community calls to assist with baby essentials. And uh, while talking to a few of the mothers, they really, really were in desperate need, telling me that they really need milk. Most of the families I spent and, uh, and talked, they said that uh, nobody is walking in the family. Customizing a month's supply of necessities, the club has to date handed out close to 30 packs. Food essentials, the skin care essentials, the bathing essentials and the uh, feeding with the uh, health and care. For some of the recipients, the assistance has been gratifying. I would like to thank the Rotary Club in Suva for the great help. This will greatly help my family in these trying times. The baby fighting the, the diaper and the food. And my baby, when he was waited yesterday, he managed to end up to 7.4 kg from 5.2. The club is hoping to assist around 100 families in this first phase before planning a second round. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Turning overseas, protesters in Minneapolis in the United States have set fire to a police station near the site where African-American George Floyd was killed during an arrest. The city is grappling with three nights of violence. And Fiji FA host elite coaching workshop this and more in sports after the break. And I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fijian rugby players are known the world over for their humble virtues and flying Fijians head coach Vern Cotta is hoping this will help win games. Having previously coached star Fijian players in the French top 14, the New Zealander is relishing the idea of working with the whole team of them. Karatavi with the details. The humble virtues of the Fijian player, I like the fact that he's humble. Um, I think we need to get that confidence of these players uh, by being honest and, and being transparent. 
Uh, and once you do, once you gain these players' confidence, they'll do anything. Uh, they can win games. Players who are moving clubs eh, and uh, changing clubs, uh, but the coach uh, is the one that's following up on all those and keeping tabs on uh, player and players and likewise player. With the aim of elevating the standard of football in the country, National Football Head Coach Fleming Seretslev hosted an elite coaching workshop targeting women and youth coaches. The course is aimed to foster growth of the sport from the grassroots to national level. Tale Matarakula has more. The course focused mainly on developing basic tactical skills. It's more about uh, talent development. It means it's about um, developing those talents that are identified here in Fiji. The course covered from game strategies to the mindset of players. Seritslev hopes the coaches will be able to incorporate them into their coaching routines. I, I hope I can uh, make uh, the coaches here aware of what is uh, important when they are developing uh, use players because the main aim for all of us is actually to create national team players as well for women as for men. The coaches attending the workshop say they are eager to share what they've learned with their teams. Defense and attacking and um, uh, players, uh, some of the players when they are in the training they are pretty good but when they are sent in the field to play they lose their confidence, the decision makings are uh, troubling them mm -hmm. so that's what uh, we will try to improve in this uh, uh, when things resume. Just to evaluate the players, that's the only key areas that I'm going to focus now. Individual uh, players, how to analyze them and evaluate them. Then from there, then I'll try to develop what they're lacking. The elite coaching workshops will continue in Lambasa and Ba over the next few weeks. Talima Terkula, FBC Sports. The Roosters secured its first win of the NRL season following their 28-12 victory over Rabbitohs at Bankwest Stadium last night. In the second game, the Cowboys ran riot over Titans in dominant NRL return with a 36-6 NRL win in Townsville. Meanwhile, round three of the NRL Telstra Premiership matches will feature live on FBC Sports Channel tonight. And in weather cloudy periods with some showers were experienced over Vanua Levu, Taviuni and nearby smaller islands, eastern and interior Viti Levu, Lao and Lomai Viti group, elsewhere cloudy periods with some showers and isolated thunderstorms. And taking a look at the map, looking at the west, the weather, fine weather prevailed throughout. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy conditions this morning with showers in the afternoon. Now up north, more cloudy periods with brief showers. And at sea, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 12.20 a.m. tomorrow. Sunrise is at 6.30. Now for tomorrow, it's occasional showers and a few thunderstorms over Vanua Levu, Taviuni and nearby smaller islands, eastern and interior Viti Levu, Lao and Lomai Viti group, Elsewhere, some showers and isolated thunderstorms, cool at night. And a further outlook, we're looking further on to Monday. Similar conditions will prevail. And recapping the main stories for tonight, COVID-19 patient appears in court for allegedly breaking quarantine. Cabinet considers suspending Kawakawa and Donu ban and leaks of confidential information will not be tolerated. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, is Fiji facing a major problem with animal abuse? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. And before we go, from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye for now. Toka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.